Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. Hello. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. This is a gift from Titan, Chad Upchurch. Daniel, in the distance, do you hear that? It's the, not the Chad, but it is Chad. It's not the Chad. Not the Chad. But it's, it's the Chad. Okay. Uh, oh, I was about to say, that looks a lot like a Balcones bot. Uh. Oh. <laughs> so they did this in partnership with the uh, Luckenbach Texas Inc. Luckenbach Texas people. You're, you're just saying words. Who is Luckenbach Texas? Well, Luckenbach. Luckenbach, like made famous by Willie Nelson. It's like, well, tell them. It's a tiny little town in Texas mm -hmm. that has way too many famous musicians playing in it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Was made famous by some of the great original Texas songwriters, uh, making it their home base for shows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been in songs. Luckenbach. Mm -hmm. And. Um, they partnered with Balconis to do this whiskey. This is a part of the series where Balconis has partnered with other things. They did a Shiner Bach, okay. right? Yeah, yeah. This is the Lucan Bach. This is their malt whiskey, but it's all Texas grain. Yes. So finished mm -hmm. in William Chris. Oh, our, our friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, dessert wine barrels. Right. So we did a, a full on episode. Mm -hmm. We went to William Chris. At William Chris, yeah. We needed to fix barrel number 10. Mm -hmm. Barrel number 10 it was worked. weird. It worked. And we, tro we chose a Senso barrel. Senso. 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 Still Senso. my favorite one of that uh, yeah. release. They gave us a tour of the whole place. We mm -hmm. went to the barrel house. Uh, that episode is on the Whiskey Tribe channel. Yeah. How to, I don't know. Something wine finished whiskey. It's a, it's a thing. It's somewhere in there. But 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 here's I have not noticed it. I've not noticed it. Uh, I typically would be like, all right, Balcon is good. We got like obviously it's gonna be clutch, it's in the mix, it's gonna uh -huh. have a nice whiskey. But fresh off the heels of that new contender in the Texas yeah. whiskey scene, Shire. Shire, what the hell? Now, could Shire steal some of the thunder of this Balconis? Because I always liked the Balconis. Mm. I I have liked Almost every single Balcones I've ever put in my glass. The only reason that would be an unfair comparison is because I prefer malt to, to bourbon. Okay. And this is malt. Yeah, but that Shire. Yeah. It was so, like, do you call that a bourbon? It was almost malty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To call that a bourbon, it's like, yeah, I dare you to find even 20 other bourbons that are going to deliver what that delivers. Yeah, or that anybody on a blind lineup would be like, oh, this even, is obviously a bourbon. Right, no, I was going to yeah. say that in blind. Okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. All right. There's that dry malt. What is what is their going Texas on? malt as opposed to their uh, for me always has this a, a more a dry. I'm thinking tree bark. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm thinking the smell of the outside of a tree. Yeah, it is dry. There's but, a tremendous amount of sweet. There's not a tremendous amount of sweetness that's coming in the nose. Back about halfway in there is a really densely perfumed to, uh, aromatic tobacco. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, so, is that a, uh, a mushroom if, or a... I am gonna call and... Uh, it's not earthy. I'm gonna throw a call back here and then I'm gonna actually be able to check up on it maybe this week or next week. Okay. Um, in Waco, there is a humidor, a cigar space called Don's Humidor. Okay. And he blended his own pipe tobaccos. Okay. And there is a pipe tobacco in Don's Humidor called Number Two. Oh, yeah. And in my head, I'm recalling Don's Humidor Number Two. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's fruit. There's uh, um, 
These aren't obvious notes. Let me put Not it this way. peach. But we're trying to find specific flavors. What I can say is this is definitely off the beaten path from most whiskeys you have experienced. Yeah, it's very fruity too. As, as much as it has oh, that on, dry hold on, hold on, barkness. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You say very fruity. I think those words very fruity will elicit more of like a, a sweet, recognizable fruit. No, I mean malt fruit. Okay. Like we get this even in our heart cuts on the new make. Yeah. Uh, uh, with the Maris Otter malt. Melon. I'm thinking like this melon fruit direction. Okay. Yeah, I think melon's probably the closest. And then again, there's a barkiness to it. That dry character mm -hmm. comes, uh, comes across to me as like bark. Oh, hey. It's oh. not nearly as candied as I thought it would be on the palate. I'm getting like an oily mushroom? Yeah, it's sweet, but it's way more savory than it is sugary. You all again, sweet. The sweet for me falls off pretty quick. And then we get into the savory and then, mm. what is that? I don't know, but we need to have more of a legitimate shot at it. Yeah, I think oily mushroom is probably the closest thing that I can come up with. Wow, that is oh, oh, very oh. different. Um, uh, uh, there's, what is that reduction, like a wine reduction mushroom sauce that goes on steaks? Oh, yeah, they, uh, they, they like um, Trattoria and stuff like that? Yeah, and it's always a certain kind of dessert wine. Um, it's not, what is it? My mind's going blank. We can pull up the Trattoria It's not menu. sherry, it's... Uh, we can pull up the menu. You want to pull up the menu? No, it's not a Trattoria that I'm thinking of. They, they haven't done it in a while. Mm. It's but not it's a, Mar a Marsala? Marsala! Okay. It's not Marsala, but it is in that... <laughs> Marsala! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Marsala. That's what I was thinking of, but it's not sherry. It's not the almondy right, or right, the right. deep plum, but it is this like dessert wine, but the mushrooms have taken over. Yeah. So you can't really... When you try that reduction sauce with mushrooms, yeah. you don't... You won't taste like, oh, that's obviously a Marsala. I mean, you, you do if you know what you're looking for, but it doesn't... It's not the same as sipping on Marsala, which... I mean, who would sip on Marsala? I don't know. The more I go back to it, the more it gives incrementally, not in a big, you know, all at once, but incrementally, it seeds more and more territory to a little bit of that sweet character. Yeah, that's what I was getting. The sweet character clings and it builds the more you go back to it. 54%. Oh, <laughs> ABV, okay. I thought you were talking about 54% mushroom. No, oh, yeah. How much mushroom is in this glass? At least 54. Yeah, give me a little dose there. That is a little dose. I'm gonna ask you, and you gotta be honest with your words. I'm gonna ask you in a little bit between the Shire we just had and this. Oh, I already have one, but but they're not. It's not the same. It's like I would pick a, a sports car for a certain reason, and I would pick a cool truck for a different reason. But I'd have a hard time picking okay. between the two. I'll define the reason. Okay. For drinking with your face. <laughs> Thought, yeah, it's like I'll define your vehicle choice for driving with your hands. Oh, it's, well, it's driving. It's uh -huh. just called driving. Okay, so fine. Break it down <laughs> situationally. In what off-road or racetrack situation are no, you consuming no, no. these whiskeys? Shiner, uh, not Shiner. Shire, Shire yeah. is making more of the Texas bourbon than I prefer. Okay. When I seek out hefty. Fuck you, high heat Texas bourbons. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, still Austin has like this light, sparkly, refreshing kind yeah, of bourbon, it's, it's right? Good yeah. I like the heavy handed, oof. Uh, but Balcones always delivers in what I love about American malt. Okay. Yeah. Which is yeah. this like really embracing of the climate and the oaks and the depths and it, the deep it, mid palate. I huge. I always like how decidedly, intentionally unique they are. Mm -hmm. They lean into that difference as opposed to, well, what's most popular and how do we make something that's very close to that? Yeah. They, and you know, to their credit, they've made a nice little corner of the market, some very, very uh, enthusiastic fans winning all types of awards. It's beautiful whiskey, but they're doing it their own way, which is fantastic. The Shire though, I think between these two bottles- Did you save your Shire? I, I have. Oh, okay. I could pour any more of that. Yeah, just a sip, sip left. Between these two bottles. Specifically, you're going back to the Shire? I'm reaching for the Shire. Wow. It is, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a bourbon. This is a malt. 
Yeah. I, I think probably my most uh, exciting category in whiskey these days is American malt. I think there's so much, um, so many amazing whiskeys that are coming into their own right now in the American malt scene. But right now, between these two bottles, believe it or freaking not, the young upstart, the contender, This is the getting Shire. sweeter and sweeter every sip. It does. Um, and I'm also getting a little bit more of that sherry note, that almost sulfuric uh, uh, struck match note Dude. on the aftertaste. Dude, I, I, I really like I'm this. Gonna get, I'm giving it to the sherry. Yeah, wow. I know. I know. I love volcanoes, but I'm giving it to the sherry. But that specific bottling, the young one, what are we doing? What are we doing? Don't listen to the distributor. Screw that guy. They don't know anything. <laughs> but uh, the, 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 ah, just that dark, rich. Anyways, it's about this one. Well, I can't really be objective because I'm actually the number one investor in Balconis. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. That's why he says Balconis every other episode. Emotionally. Yeah, yeah. He uh, checks his phone and yeah. you can see, oh, I just got a nice little affiliate. Affiliate, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm emotionally invested. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this is a be- I, I have lost a lot of that sensitivity to the mushroom note. Yeah, it's, it's getting sweeter fade. and sweeter every sip. Yeah, now that I can't really find the mushroom very much at all. Well, and we added water. Ah, oh, but that's good though. Yeah, but- Man, no. we haven't even hit the comments. Oh, hi. No, that's that's how good the whiskey conversation was. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, Jeff 30, if you guys go to Ireland again, you should bring your whiskey knowledge to the Tri Channel, or better yet, have them come to you guys and the Vault. Wouldn't or it be even fun? the Jolly Korean Englishman crew. Wouldn't it be fun to do the tr- Irish try? Sure. I think that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. We could bring them Texas whiskeys. Well, yeah, but we're going to Scotland. I know. We're not. Yeah. Someday, yeah. I'll go back there. We'll be in Scotland this summer. Gary Cooper. I'm kind of excited about that. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm, I'm not kind of. Yeah. I'm like, I'm really excited. Yeah, no, about we got an that. email um, this morning from our. Trip coordinator. Yeah, you got to update all your details and everything. Yeah, do I need gonna, to do anything about that, or is Dan figuring it out? Uh, Dan and me, and you, I think you're and I need to log in just so that I can be a part of the chat. Yeah, you, you were CC. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gary Cooper, here's an honest question: If you want whiskey with some port flavor, could you just get a bottle of the whiskey and a bottle of port and yes. pour some of each in your glass? Yeah. No. So I would do it as a rinse. Yeah. Not as a blend. Yeah. And so what I'd do is pour a port in a glass. Roll the whole glass around until it coats every surface, mm-hmm. drink the port, mm-hmm. then fill it with whiskey. Yeah, that'll get you there. Yeah. Yeah, the moment you start putting in like a, like a dose. A reasonable amount. Then yeah. you're throwing off. If yeah. you want to know what the tastes like, uh, Basil Hayden has a whiskey that's not a whiskey, that's an actual blend of whiskey and port. Mm-hmm. And it's over here somewhere. But it's way too sweet. Mm. It's Candied. Mm, 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 mm. I wonder how many people are going to get curious enough to try and find that Shire. Is that a very it's down by Houston? They're they're small. They're small. I'm they're saying. very small. I know, but that in particular, they might be one. bigger than us. Well, who, is, who isn't? <laughs> where's your uh, Where's your Shire bottle? Right here, right here. I mean, glass. Well, sure. Who isn't bigger than us? We just are yeah. big enough for people in the community who want to make whiskeys with us. Uh, yeah, I don't know how small of addition that is of an addition that is, but damn though. Did you, did you, did you? Ah, now I'm getting a, um, a Pure One. The Wicker. Wicker, yeah. 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 you found the Wicker earlier. Yeah. yeah. All right, anyways. T- dude, yeah. do we have another shoot after this? No. Okay, all right. Because we're going off on a streak. Yeah, we are. Here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. It's the Whiskey Tribe Quarterly Challenge. Do you like whiskey? Are you drunk on a Tuesday and not in college? It's time for a dry week. Yeah, you heard right. It's seven days of fucking sobriety, baby. Save your brain, liver, skin, bones, intestines, heart, immune system, and grasp on reality. It's almost like whiskey is bad for you or something. Ha! I'm a guy in the comments and I say the dry week is done because I can quit anytime I want. Then do it with the rest of us and stop being a wimp. Don't let your habits rule you. Take control. July 5th through 12th. Try week. Do it unless you're scared. Why are you yelling? If you fight me, fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. us.